If you've ever opened your lab results, saw LDL in red and thought, well, it's been a good life. You're not alone. But here's the truth. Cholesterol labs are not a one number test. They're more like a weather report. One number can be high, but you still need to know what else is going on. Wind, pressure, storm conditions. Before you declare a hurricane, Today I'm going to teach you what your doctor didn't have time to teach you in a 15 minute office visit. How to interpret your cholesterol test in plain English. We will focus on the basic cholesterol panel including total cholesterol, LDL, HDL, and triglycerides, APOB and APOB to A ratio, NMR particle testing, LDLP, small LDLP, and LDL size. And I'll give you clear examples of each. But keep in mind, this is education not personal medical advice. Always pair labs with your full history and risk factors. Here's how we can make this easy. Think of your blood vessels as a highway. Cholesterol is the stuff being delivered. Cargo. Particles like LDL are the vehicles carrying that cargo. Your artery wall is the road surface. So the question is not just how much cholesterol do I have, it's also how many vehicles are carrying it and is the road getting damaged? That's why LDL cholesterol alone can confuse people. Let's get started. Part one, the basic lipid panel, the numbers everyone gets. Number one, total cholesterol. Total cholesterol is a rough total of cholesterol in different particles. Plain English, it's like counting all the vehicles on the highway, cars, trucks, buses, without knowing which one causes accidents. Helpful, but not the best risk number by itself. Number two, LDL cholesterol. This is the cholesterol inside LDL particles. Plain English, LDL cholesterol tells you how much stuff is in the delivery vehicles. It does not tell you how many delivery vehicles are out there. This matters because more vehicles means more chances to bump into the artery wall. Example one, person A has an LDL cholesterol of 160. Person B also has an LDL cholesterol of 160. Same LDL cholesterol, same red flag, but now look at ApoB. We'll explain it fully in a minute. Person A has an ApoB of 85. Person B has an ApoB of 130. Plain English, person A has fewer risky vehicles on the road. Person B has more risky vehicles on the road. Why it matters. More risky vehicles means more chances for particles to enter the artery wall over time, especially if the artery wall is irritated. Number three, HDL cholesterol. HDL is often called the good cholesterol. Plain English, HDL is like the cleanup and recycling team. It's not perfect, but in many people, higher HDL often travels with better metabolic health. Important, HDL is not magic protection. It's a clue. Number four, triglycerides. Triglycerides are fat energy in the blood. Plain English, triglycerides often rise when the body is struggling with metabolism, especially insulin resistance, too much sugar, refined starch, fatty liver, or excess alcohol. A good way to use triglycerides is to pair them with HDL. Part two, the triglyceride HDL ratio. It's a simple metabolic health clue. Here's the math anyone can do. Triglyceride HDL ratio equals triglycerides divided by HDL. Example two, triglycerides equal 80, HDL equals 50. Triglyceride to HDL ratio equals 80 divided by 50 equals 1.6. Plain English, this often suggests your metabolism is in a calmer, healthier zone. Why it matters. Lower triglycerides often mean your liver isn't pumping out lots of fat-rich particles from excess fuel. This pattern is commonly seen when insulin levels are lower and metabolic health is better. Example three, triglycerides are 240 HDL 40. Triglyceride to HDL ratio equals 240 divided by 40 equals 6. Plain English. This often suggests insulin resistance or metabolic strain. Why it matters. High triglycerides frequently mean the liver is overloaded and sending out more fat containing particles. This pattern often shows up alongside prediabetes, fatty liver, belly fat, and inflammation. Many studies connect higher triglyceride HDL ratios with higher cardiovascular risk patterns. Part three, blood pressure. Yes, blood pressure. The risk this factor people ignore. Before we go deeper into cholesterol, we need to talk about blood pressure because this is huge. Plain English, high blood pressure is like driving heavy trucks over a road every day. It wears the road down. Example four, person A has a blood pressure of 118 over 72, while person B has a blood pressure of 148 over 92. Plain English, person B's artery walls are under more stress all day long. Why it matters. When the artery wall is stressed and irritated, it becomes easier for part particles to get into the wall. Big studies like interheart show hypertension strongly relates to heart attack 
risk. Odds ratio around 1.9. So if you're only staring at LDL while ignoring blood pressure, you're missing a major part of the story. Part four, APOE B, the particle count test. Now we get to one of the most useful tests, APOE B, plain English. APOE B is like counting how many risky vehicles are on the road. Most particles that can cause plaque carry APOE B, like LDL and certain remnants. So APOE B is a strong estimate of how many aterogenic particles you have. Example five, LDL cholesterol is 190, APOE B is 90. Plain English, LDL cholesterol is high, but the number of risky particles might not be extremely high. Why it matters? Sometimes each particle carries more cholesterol. So the LDL cholesterol looks high even when particle count isn't sky high. This is why LDL cholesterol alone can over scare people. Example C, LDL cholesterol 125, APOE B 140. Plain English, LDL cholesterol doesn't look terrible but the number of risky particles is high. Why it matters. This can be more concerning because it means lots of particles have the opportunity to enter the artery wall over time. APOE B goals depend on risk level, but generally lower targets are used for higher risk people. Part five, APOE B to APOE A ratio, risk versus protection balance. Now let's simplify the ratio. APOE B equals particles that can cause trouble. APOE A equals a major protein related to HDL particles. So the the ratio is basically how many troublemakers compared to helpers. Example seven, April B equals 120, April A equals 120. Ratio equals 120 divided by 120 equals one. Plain English, that balance is tilted towards higher risk. Example eight, April B is 80, April A is 160. Ratio is 80 divided by 160 equals 0.5. Plain English, that balance is more favorable. Why it matters? This ratio performed strongly in large international research like InterHeart, where it was one of the strongest lipid related markers associated with heart attack risk. Labs like Mail provide reference ranges used clinically. Part six, NMR testing, LDL particle and small LDL. NMR testing is just a more detailed traffic report. LDL particle equals how many LDL vehicles are on the road. Small LDL particles equals how many are the small dense type? LDL particle size equals average size. Pattern A tends to be larger. Pattern B tends to be smaller. LabCorp's NMR report explains cut points and patterns. Here's an easy way to show it. Percent small LDL equals small LDL particle divided by LDL particle times 100. Example nine, LDL particle equals 2000. Small LDL particle equals 400. Percent small equals 400 divided by 200 times 100 equals 20%. Plain English, not many small particles. And you want a smaller percentage of LDL particles, maybe in the 20 to 30% or less range. Often a better overall pattern. Example 10, LDL particle equals 2000, small LDL particle equals 1200. Percent small equals 1200 divided by 2000 times 100 equals 60%. Plain English, a lot of small particles, often a worse pattern. Why it matters, small dense particles are more likely to be seen in insulin resistance patterns. But here's the key, LDL particle how many particles is often the most important part and size adds context. Here's the simple how to read your lab's checklist. If you want the simplest approach, number one, blood pressure. Is the road being damaged? Number two, triglyceride plus HDL equals calculate triglyceride to HDL ratio. That gives you a metabolic clue. Number three, APOE B or LDL particles. How much risky traffic? Number four, APOE B to APOE A ratio. Troublemakers versus helpers. Number five, NMR details. Small versus large particles equals the traffic type. Because heart health is usually not one villain. It's usually a combo. Damaged roads plus bad traffic plus metabolic stress. Here's my promise. I'll keep making videos like this so you better understand what you should and shouldn't fear. So you can better understand the story instead of fearing one factor like an elevated total cholesterol. And remember, your labs don't judge you. They're just giving you clues about the root cause. And clues are good news because clues mean you can act. I'll see you in the next video.